Risk management, it's one of those things that every security and compliance program needs, but it's also one of those things that every company struggles with managing. We're gonna dive more into some challenges with risk management and things that you can do to improve your program. But first, if you've stumbled across this video, you most likely fall into one of two situations. One, you're working in a security or governance risk and compliance role, and you have some level of involvement with risk management processes. That could mean that you're either running the entire department or program, or maybe you just have job duties that are dealing with risk. The second situation could be that you're a new professional either trying to break into a GRC role or you've stumbled across risk management in your studies and you wanna learn more about it. Regardless of which situation that you fall into, everybody can benefit from this content, so don't click away. Before we hop into the content, let's talk about our sponsor for this video. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated fast. Fanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more, saving you time and money. With Vanta, you can unify your security program management with a built-in risk register and reporting and proactively manage security reviews with AI-powered security questionnaires. Over 7,000 fast-growing companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Access Vanta's free suite of resources to scale your governance, risk, and compliance program at the link below. All right, let's get into the content. Okay, let's take a step back, and I want you to think about when you were a young kid interested in playing around your neighborhood or wherever you lived. Chances are really good that you were yelled at or at least educated by your parents or somebody else on the idea of looking both ways before you cross the street. Why do you think that they taught you that? Obviously you were taught that, so a car didn't come speeding down the road and crash into you, but if a car was 500 feet away, you knew that it was safe to cross the road. Another way of putting it is that the likelihood of something really bad happening when a car is close to you is very high and the impact of it colliding with you could be really bad. That means the risk of a car being close would be very high, so you would avoid crossing the road until it passed. You were literally being taught risk management from an early age and you didn't even know it. I know that's a fairly basic way of understanding it, but let's fast forward to today, however many years it's been, and you're a working professional now. In businesses, just like in life, there are all kinds of risks, but they aren't necessarily the same as we discuss with cars driving on the road. There are a bunch of different types of risks that could be applicable, such as financial risk, political risk, business risk, compliance risk, and many others. For this video, we're mainly gonna focus on technology risk because that's what the majority of you are interested in, but I want you to understand that other types of risks do exist. By definition, per the Google webs, technology risk, also known as information technology risk, is a type of business risk defined as the potential for a technology failure to disrupt a business. Typically what happens in an organization is that somebody tries to identify all the possible risks that exist for that business. If the business is small, it might only have a few risks to consider, but if it's a decent sized business, it's probably gonna have a lot of risks to consider. From here, you would look at the likelihood of that risk being realized, meaning that it's gonna happen, and the impact of that risk if it occurs. So for example, you would go through each risk and rate its likelihood on a scale of one to five, where one means it's gonna rarely happen if ever, and five means it's pretty much gonna happen always. Then you would go through each risk and rate its impact on a scale of one to five, where one means very little impact to the organization, and five might have severe consequences, either financially or completely destroying the business. Then you take the likelihood and the impact and you multiply those numbers together. So five times five will be 25, and then you prioritize the risks based on that number. The higher the number, the higher the priority should be to address it. You might also see ratings like low, medium, or moderate, and high, but in this video, we aren't gonna dive into those types of assessments that you might use. This tracker or log where all this information lives is called your risk register, and you have to update it as things evolve in your business. So that could be weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Honestly, I've been in organizations where this is done in an Excel spreadsheet, and it's extremely challenging to maintain manually, but having one is crucial to your success. Here's an example of a format that you could use for your risk register, but you can see as you start adding a whole bunch of information, this is gonna get very complicated and very difficult to maintain. But you can see here, we have the likelihood, the impact, and the overall score, and then you go ahead and prioritize 
based on that number. Then you also have terms like risk appetite and risk tolerance, where you essentially need to be in agreement with the rest of the business that's impacted by the risks on the actions to take, such as just accepting the risk as is, applying even more security controls, or even getting cyber insurance. This larger collective process of continuing to identify, monitor, and treat, or implement controls to address the risk is something we call risk management. Did I mention that this stuff is really difficult to do? Because it is. Okay, so we've spent a bunch of time talking about what risk and risk management is, but now let's talk about some potential risks that you might see in the real world. Again, as a reminder, we're primarily gonna focus on technology risks, but there's a ton of different risk types that exist out there. The first common risk that's related to a basic security control is not properly identifying or protecting assets based on your company's requirements. This is a relatively basic control when it comes to IT or security programs, but essentially it boils down to your ability to track assets like computers or virtual machines and ownership of those assets. For this risk, you could literally have 10 or more controls associated to this risk to make sure that you do it properly. From policies to procedures to agents installed on those systems, there's a lot that has to be done and in place for you to feel great about your process. What if one of your controls for this risk either aren't implemented or work needs to be done to make your process reasonably secure? There's going to be tickets or something associated with that work, and then how are you gonna track it? Again, I've been in organizations where a spreadsheet is the tracking method, and that's really not sufficient. Let's talk about another common risk scenario, and that's systems and data being breached or compromised by unauthorized people. It's fairly common for organizations with an office to have cleaning crews or other non-employees doing work throughout the building, so right there you have physical security concerns about protecting data. Most likely, there's policies talking about how to protect printed documents or other media in your company. Then also think about the technology side of things, where you have your account management processes limiting user privileges, onboarding and offboarding, you can have 50 controls for this. You could even be into the hundreds of controls for this. Again, tracking this can be a nightmare. So as we've already discussed, tracking all your risks and associated controls can be quite a massive challenge. Depending on how many compliance frameworks that you deal with, you might have a ton of controls to identify, associate with risks, and monitor their overall compliance throughout the year. Tracking through spreadsheets is such an ineffective way to do this, but I've seen so many small businesses attempt to use this method and feel like they're okay, but in reality, they aren't in a good situation for risk and risk management. Additionally, a spreadsheet can't reach out to things like AWS to check your configurations or monitor new accounts that were created. That means that you're stuck manually logging into an application or generating some kind of report where data can't be correlated with other information. A second challenge with risk management is that with all these controls and tracking their compliance to standards like SOC 2, ISO 27001, and many others, it's not easy to visually display this information in a format that's easily digestible for senior leadership. When teams use spreadsheets to track risk management activities, what tends to happen is the documents get flooded with massive amounts of text and then it turns into a novel. That's not helpful to leadership and it's a very ineffective way to look at trends or make decisions based on risk especially. The third challenge that I wanna to touch on is risk management changes over time in any environment. It doesn't matter if you're a small business just starting your security program or if you're an existing security program looking to add different compliance certifications, things are gonna change. The more manual processes that you embed into your risk management program, the more difficult it's gonna be for you to adapt relative to the changes that you're experiencing. Quite honestly, I've seen companies and teams with risk management processes so embedded into how they do things in the business that it becomes challenging and potentially scary when things change. Obviously long term, that can either hurt or at least limit the potential of having an effective risk management program and processes that are mature and appropriate for that point in time. Now let's shift gears and talk about some different features or things to look for that can help you dramatically improve your risk management program. First, I highly recommend finding a way to use automation to track your risks for your risk management program, which is also tied to various security controls. Doing this manually is a nightmare, and this will literally save you sleep at night because it won't be all you think about. The better that the risks and controls can be mapped together, the better off that you'll be. Additionally, when you have audits for compliance certifications, it makes the process significantly more effective and efficient when you're providing evidence. This is significantly more important if you're operating in a highly agile or fast-paced environment where things are rapidly changing, there's no way you're gonna keep up with these changes manually. The second thing that's an absolute must in a risk management program is an easy way to display your risks and operational state. Senior leaders love heat maps because they're easy to understand quickly and can be used to identify trends or areas that need to be prioritized. Since it's crucial to focus on activities and prioritize them based on criticality, 
This isn't an optional item if you want to be successful. The third major need in a risk management program is a flexible way of doing all things risk management. One guarantee in risk management is that things are going to change over time. Whether that's risks, the required controls, the policies, the technologies, it doesn't matter because things are going to change. You need to implement solutions into your risk management program that are not only going to get the job done today, but that are also flexible and can grow over time or evolve as things change. Scalable solutions are the name of the game when it comes to technology, and the better that you can implement things that scale, the higher success rate that you'll have as time goes by. Question of the day, what do you think the most challenging part of risk management is? Let me know down in the comments section below. In this video, we defined risk management and we talked about the challenges that exist with it and options to look for so that you can have an effective risk management program. I highly recommend checking out our sponsor Vanta to help you solve the challenges that you might face. Remember, just because a small piece of your risk management program might seem harmless enough to perform manually, you need to consider the bigger picture and how that impacts the evolution of your program. You need a solution for your company that can evolve with your risk management program and that can make life easier and more connected because otherwise you'll get overwhelmed with the amount of work that's actually required over time. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video and I'll see you next time.